So as you can see, like I built a theme around my application, which was intersecting things. And that really, really helped me stand out. So hey guys, today it's an honor to introduce Mansi, who is a freshman at UCLA. And today we will be talking about her journey, how a student or international student can get accepted to UCLA from India. So hi, Mansi, can you please introduce us? Hi, Hernur, and hi, everyone else. My name is Mansi Kashik, and I am an incoming freshman at UCLA, as Hernur mentioned. Um, I originally am from the Bay Area in California, hence the very thick accent. And um, I recently graduated from Greenwood High International School in Bangalore. So I moved here about four years ago. And um, yeah, I'm going to be entering UCLA as a human biology and society and economics double major. So it's they're really contrasting fields, but I will definitely elaborate on this later as to why I'm choosing to double major in this. And I'm going in as a pre-med, which might change or may not, but we will see. So my first question will be, since you are originally from US, so you were born there, but you applied from India. So in which category did you fall? Like in the category of applying as an international student from India, or you can say applying as a US citizen for out of state or maybe in state. So how, how did it go? And what, like, what, what acceptance rate you would say that you had of getting into UCs? Yeah, so this is a very common question, especially coming from international schools, because a lot of kids I know from international schools are U.S. citizens. And I personally was born in California, so I'm a California citizen, um, too. So to break it down, when I move back to California, if my family moves back to California, I would uh, have to pay in-state tuition. But for now, since I'm applying as an international student, I am paying out-of-state tuition and the international uh, tuition, which is the same, about 66 k Um and as for the application, I sort of fall in this weird category. Like I and my peers have asked uh, admissions counselors, like what category do we fall in? Like out of state, international, like, cause we're citizens, but we're like international students. And so they say like, they don't have an answer as well. They're like different universities follow different rules. Um, and we sort of fall in this in between category between out of state and international students. So we necessarily don't have the advantage of out of state students, but we don't also have the disadvantage of international students. So I guess acceptance rates wise, if you see UCLA's website and like the acceptance rates of out of state and international students, we would sort of fall in the between. So if it was like 20 or it was like 11% um, to like 7%, we would be in like sort of the 8% category, I guess. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty low. So if your parents maybe move back to maybe California with you, will they be able to convert out of state to in state? Because it, it was kind of possible for me in Georgia, because if like my family somehow comes to Georgia and start working for one year, they convert it. Do that, do they do that in California? Um, yeah, so I've lived in California for 14 years, right? So I have a house there and I pay the time I and my family pays the taxes and stuff. So technically right now we are California residents, but the UCs have a rule that you have to live in California for 365 days before you are eligible for um, uh, in-state tuition. And so if my family does move back, since we're paying the taxes, since we have a uh, residence there, then we will be eligible. And that's one of the main reasons I chose UCLA over some of the other schools I got into, especially private schools. Now, uh, what are the universities you got accepted to? Uh... Other than UCLA? Um, yeah, so yeah. I was accepted to UC Berkeley, uh, University of Southern California, USC, uh, Carnegie Mellon University, uh, Emory University, University of Washington, um, uh, yeah, that's basically it. And then I got waitlisted wow. at WashU, uh, which is Washington University at St. Louis. And then I ED'd to Duke University and then I ended up getting rejected. But that's a very tough question. Why did you choose UCLA over, over UC Berkeley? Because UC Berkeley <laughs> is in the heart of the city uh, in, uh, in yeah. San Francisco near Bay Area. <laughs> That's a completely viable question. My family and friends have the same exact question. Uh, I think <laughs> up in the Bay Area, um, I, ha I always had this like thing that I was going to go to Berkeley because everyone, every tech, every entrepreneur, every like health person is from UC Berkeley because that's like the public IV, especially for the Bay Area, right? Um, and so growing up, it was always in the back of my mind that I would go to Berkeley, Stanford or UCLA. Like my mom pulled up this um, sheet from eighth grade where uh, I wrote like my dream schools are UCLA, Berkeley and Stanford. And so those are always in the back of my mind. But um, I think personally why I chose UCLA over Berkeley um, was because um, 
UCLA, so I'm a pre-med, right? So I'm going to be applying to medical school in the future. And UCLA has this sort of thing. Um, like it's very, it's very pre-med oriented. Um, it has the David Geffen School of Medicine, which is like a world renowned medical school. It has the, um, I'm forgetting the name, but it has another hospital, which is very, very renowned. And Berkeley has hospitals nearby, but the only like uh, ne- like hospital near Berkeley is UCSF, which is um, in another city. So San Francisco and Berkeley are different cities. So you would have to take the BART, which is the local train to UCSF if you ever want to do some research, volunteering, which are all integral to getting into medical school in the future. And so having a medical school on campus was a huge, huge advantage of UCLA. Moreover, Berkeley, in my opinion, is very, very highly ranked because of its graduate programs rather than its undergraduate programs. So um, its graduate programs, have, they have a smaller teacher to student ratio, whereas um, in for undergraduates, you only basically, this is from other research I've done, I don't want to undermine um, Berkeley in any way, but um, from the research I've done, you only interact with graduate or PhD students rather than directly with your professors. And at UCLA, like I just finished my first summer quarter at UCLA, and I was directly interacting with the professors, even though my class sizes were quite big, like my math class size was around 60 students and my uh, bio class was around 120 students. Um, I still got to directly interact with the professors. Professor, like he had sessions with each student to review midterms and final exams. And it was just a really nice um, sort of feeling and social, it was, it was just a nice feeling. And I wanted that in my undergraduate, especially for medical school to get recommendations and stuff like that and research opportunities, which professors have connections to. Uh, the last reason is kind of dumb, but it's a personal reason. I just always wanted to go to UCLA when I was little, like as compared to Berkeley and as compared to um, uh, some of the other schools I was considering, only because I feel like UCLA has a really, really nice atmosphere in terms of sports, in terms of clubs, in terms of the campus, we're rated the number one campus in the entire nation. And I just wanted that, you know, sense of camaraderie and sense of social, that the separation of social life and economic, I mean, why am I say economics? Education, um, because um, I think that isn't like present in Berkeley as much because I, This is from my research again, but I think I've heard like from the people I've talked to before choosing and making my decision, Berkeley is just uh, very stressful and there's just a lot of stress on education and becoming from India um, where education is very, very stressed already. I wanted a different atmosphere going into college. And so, yeah, those are the three main reasons I chose UCLA. Awesome. That completely makes sense because I think when you are in a better location, you value the campus life more. So you see, Hale definitely has better location in terms of, you know, pursuing medicine. So now finally, let's talk about your UC experience. So in terms of application process, how did you stood out in the application? Because, you know, now at the end of the day, a lot of Indian students have same extracurriculars. The story is very, very similar. So how did you take your step forward to stand out? Yeah, this is a very important question, which a lot of people don't think of, because when you go, when you enter high school, it's just, okay, I have to get into the Ivy League. I have to get into the best UCs ever. I have to get into the best private uni- private universities ever. And I think it's just really, really important to find things that are of interest to you, because if you find things that are of interest to you, you will pursue them and you will take them to the next level where p- other people haven't. So if you start with MUN and you're really passionate about it, you who knows, you might become the chair. But if you're not passionate about it and you're just doing it for the heck of it, like a lot of Indian students do, then you won't take it to the next level and admissions counselors will see through that. So I think that's a reason, that's a reason a lot of Indian students don't get into the universities they want to get into because they sort of have a checklist of what they want to do, you know, start an NGO, start an initiative, write a book, um, do that research paper and stuff. And they have a checklist, which they've seen other people do and what worked for other people. But what worked for other people will not necessarily work for you. Like personally, I had some really, really, um, people say eccentric, um, I say unique activities. Um, so one of my unique activities was actually doing film research. So I did research in film. Um, if you guys are familiar with the Bollywood movies, Toilet and um, Padman, they're both about, um, they're, so they're 
for entertainment purposes, but they also address very key public health issues, uh, which is bathroom sanitation and menstruation. And so what I did was I showed those two movies to many many villages. So I went around villages in Bangalore and Rajasthan, and I showed those movies to um, the villagers. And I just wanted to see how the movies would have an impact on them and affect their consumer behavior. And so um, I saw that trend and I eventually wrote an entire research paper on it with a mentor. And so this is something that a lot of people would find diff like if you see that in admissions, like as an admissions counselor, you would find that intriguing and interesting. And I think that's something that really set me apart. The, in the intersections I made, a lot of people don't think of making an intersection between film and health. Another intersection I made was between politics and health. So I advocated for a bunch of health equities in um, rural Rajasthan to the local MLA. And so I that basically started because I um, went to a lot of political debates with my grandma, who is a political leader in Ajmer, Rajasthan. And so um, as you can see, I didn't really like do things because I had to do them. And that's what I think a lot of Indian students do, which is why they sort of fall into that, you know, um, basic Indian student who has all things checked off. And so I think it's really important to just find your unique perspective, your unique interests, your unique activities, and go with them and take them to the next level. Uh, the last activity I do want to talk about is um, the NGO I founded, which is a mission Seva. And in that, I basically um, helped disabled students um, get employment. And what I did was I, um, so this was the, origin of this is really weird because I wasn't going out and seeking to start an NGO, but it just sort of happened. I went on vacation with my parents and family uh, for my parents' anniversary. And I met these group of differently abled young adults who were on the autism spectrum, had cerebral palsy, and their parents talked to me and told me, um, you know what, they are above 18 years old and they can't get employment because no one is employing them. And so what I did was I used art therapy techniques um, and, you know, uh, other uh, occupational therapy techniques to teach them various skills from computing to, you know, making basic trays and coasters. And then we sold their skills, whether it be their skills or their products um, to people of Bangalore at, through different platforms. And that was, again, intersecting their interests with productivity and employment. And so as you can see, like I built a theme around my application, which was intersecting things. And that really, really helped me stand out because you wouldn't expect a lot of people to intersect film and health, um, uh, politics and health, media and health, um, and other stuff like that. So I think that's what really helped me stand out. And my advice is to just find your unique perspective. That was my unique perspective, but that won't work for you because that's what I'm passionate about. That's not what you're passionate about. So definitely find that unique thing and you're definitely gonna get into the school of your dreams because they, the admissions counselors will see that you're passionate about this and this is what you're gonna bring to the campus. Absolutely agree. So what's common in your entire extracurriculars list is that some whatever you have done in the entire application is so, so unique. The application officer will also read it and say, oh, this is something I've never heard of, heard about. Oh, how can someone do that? So even yeah. though it's not, you know, extremely, extremely difficult, so that let's, like people discover uh, like a new way of curing cancer. It's not that <laughs> extremely difficult, but at the same time, your extracurricular is so, so unique. So like that's more important to be unique as compared to doing something extremely difficult. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I completely agree okay. with that. Perfect. And what about your scores? If you want to talk about like, did, were you in the 95 or 99 percentile for the scores? Uh -huh. So my staff were definitely not perfect. You don't have to be the best of the best to get into the best schools. Obviously, it's great if you are the best, but you don't have to be at all. Um, so in ninth grade, I was around, um, like I would say above 90 percentile, but not like the top because I had it moved from America to India. The education system was super different. I had to adjust. And so I was um, pretty average. And then in 10th grade, I was pretty like, okay, I got a 90. I think you could round it off to a 95th or 96th percentile because I did the IGCSEs, but it would sort of um, corroborate to that and then in 10th uh, in 11th grade I did the IB curriculum so I got a 36 on 42 which is considered a pretty average score um, 
in IB, but you could sort of relate it to uh, 97, 97.5-ish. And then in 12th grade, I greatly improved my score. I think I was in the 99th percentile, top 3% of my um, graduating class. And so top three, actually top top one percent of my graduating class. And so um, I would definitely, definitely like to tell you guys to improve your scores. You don't have to be the best of the best right from the ninth grade, because if you end up dipping in 10th grade, that shows worse for you guys. So definitely try to either sustain a good score or improve. Wow. That's a, that's a great tip because a lot of students have those fluctuations. Ninth grade, they do sometimes well. Tenth drops out and eleventh, they boost. So that, 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 that's a great, great uh, advice for all the students. Now, now, other than that, any final tip you will have for the international students or for all the Indian students applying to UCs? Um, yeah, so for the, uh, if you're an international student applying to the UCs, I think it's really, really important to, as I said before, find the unique perspective and show it well in your essays. Um, so the essays are the most important part. A lot of people like reach out to me and say, you know what, I have a world record in this, but how do I show that in my application? And, um, the easiest answer to that is your essays, but you have to show it in a correct way because you have to remember that the UCs, all of them are huge schools. They receive like one, some of the most applications throughout the country. And so you have to find that unique factor that you bring to the campus and you have to show your um, interests, activities and passions in a very upfront way. So the UCs have four essays in their applications. Uh, some of the, some people call them the personal insight questions or PIQs, um, but they are the four main UC essays and you have a list of eight to pick from. So you have eight prompts, but you only have to write four from those eight prompts. And so the UC essays are super different from the Common App essay. The Common App essay is 650 words. You have to make a full story and explain your life story. But in the UC essays, that your life story, your interests, your activities are broken up into four essays. And those four essays are only 350 words. And so you can imagine how short those essays are and how hard it is to um, you know explain everything in 350 words. So what you should do is get to the point ASAP. You really, really need to maybe have an introduction of like two lines, but then get to the point as fast as you can and start listing the important things rather than, you know, okay, I did this, I started this, I felt this. That's what you do in the Common App, but that's not what you can do in the UC app. You really have to get to the point and show what you've done, what impact you've made, because the admissions counselors have literally less than a minute to check your application, especially with the UCs. This might be different in private schools because they have less applications, more funds, but the public universities have more applications, less funds. And so it's really, really important to get to the point and tell, and and like show what you're trying to say, show your unique aspects as fast as you can, because that's the only thing they care about. That's the only thing that's going to get you in. And so um, that's really, really important. Um, but yeah, my final pieces of advice are do not let this admissions process define you. I think it's really hard for Indian students, especially for like to success for success and like college applications to define them because that's what we've grown up with. Like my parents have always told me you have to go to Berkeley. Um, and even when I was making the decision, uh, my dad wanted me to go to Berkeley and um, my mom also secretly wanted me to go to Berkeley, but she didn't want to put any pressure on me. But yeah, I think it's just really important to do what you want in your own way. Film research is not looked good upon. Like it's not the best thing out there. Science research. I'm a pre-med. I'm doing economics, I'm doing film media stuff. And you don't have to be that ideal person that gets into, you know, the best colleges out there. You do what you want, you do what you want in your own way. And I think it's really hard to get caught up in that whole thing coming from an Indian background as well, because um, we have that's rooted in us getting to IIT, getting into a NEET or whatever, doing that exam. And it's just really hard. And um, I think it's just a lot. You have to understand the process. You have to be open to new ideas, um, new experiences, because that's a huge part of the U.S. Um, college culture. You really have to be open to new things and doing new things. A lot of people are stuck on the same thing, same route, doing the same research, doing the MUNs, doing the starting an NGO literally everyone I know has started an NGO and I know I've done that as well but 
that to be very frank that won't help you um stand out and i think it's just just find that unique factor however weird it is however eccentric it is and i know i this is really long winded but that's what i was trying to get across awesome that's absolutely very very helpful so thank you so much pranshi and i will recommend all of you guys to check out her channel for more advice and definitely ping her and comment her for more videos you would like to see on her channel <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I hope this helped and thank you Hanur for your channel. I I watched him so much when I was applying to U, the US. Even though I knew the process and I came from America, his channel has helped me so much and my friends so much. So definitely check it out, like, subscribe, all that and yeah, thank you. Uh-huh. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.